Hello, precious people. I'm glad to join you today also. And today I'm talking about what to meditate on every day. In an earlier video, I spoke about how to meditate effectively. Now, meditation as we know it is allowing the thoughts of your soul to sink deeply into your spirit to fellowship with God. It helps you to connect with God on a deeper level. So today you can join me as I talk about what to meditate every day. To watch the video on how to meditate effectively, click on the link that appears right above me. Great. Now, what to meditate every day? This is a concern that should help every individual to meditate effectively. Because if you really want to meditate, you should know what you are meditating about. Meditation is something that does not end within 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 40 minutes. It's something that continues for the rest of your life, for the rest of your day. So what to meditate on will help you to have an effective meditation life or meditation period. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, subscribe on the link below. Give us a thumbs up, give us a comment and share the link with your friends and your family. Now, what to meditate on every day? Number one is to meditate on the word of God or to meditate on scripture or to meditate on the Bible. Now, in Psalm 1 verses 1 to 2, the Bible says that, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So, blessed is that man who meditates on the law of God day and night. So you see, when you are meditating on the word of God, it releases blessing upon your life. Blessing is a supernatural effect which affects the natural course of your life in a positive way. So if you want to have a supernatural effect, affecting how you do things or see things in the natural, affecting how you walk in the natural, then you need to have a supernatural connection with God through meditation. So studying the word of God, reading the word of God, and committing it into meditation is going to help you every day. On the link above, I discuss how to meditate on the word of God. Take time and watch it right after this video also, and your life will not be the same. Number two, you can meditate on the character of God. What are the characters of God you know? You know, you know that God is a just God. You know that God is a loving father. You know that God is a forgiving God. How are these characters of God going to affect you to be more like him? Bible said in the book of Genesis that God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. His likeness is his character. His likeness is his ability, his mercy. How are we going to be more like him if we don't think about those characters? If we don't think about how God acts, if we don't think about how God behaves, and it will start from a good research. The Word of God can help you in that research. Watching very good sermons, good messages can also help you. Listening to very good and profound messages can also help you to connect in this way, to understand the character of God. And it will help you to get to know God and be closer to Him. My point three, you can meditate on the creation of God. Have you ever thought about the creation of God? Have you ever considered how a seed will grow to become a mighty tree? Have you ever thought about it? Have you thought about the oceans? What controls the ocean, the tides, the winds? Have you ever thought about these things? Have you ever thought about how the sun rises and falls in every single day? Have you ever thought about the changes of the seasons when there is winter and plants are totally dry, they shed off all their leaves, they are completely barren in winter time. But as soon as they get to spring, they go into summer, they begin to grow green again. They grow beautiful. Have you thought about this beauty? Have you thought about how beautiful the flower is? How the lily flower is able to feed itself and grow to assume that beauty? 
Have you ever thought about it? Have you thought about how the ants is able to acquire its food? Have you ever thought about how the elephant also able to acquire its food? How the same God will feed an elephant and feed an ant as well? You have to consider this. The more you think about the creation of God, the more God is delivered into your spirit. Because God has left his essence in every bit of creation. So we must come to understand that meditation on the creation of God is very, very important and necessary to our growth. Then my point four is to meditate on what God has done for you. I will call this meditation into remembrance. In Psalm 63 verses 6, the Bible says that when I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night. Have you ever remembered what God has done for you and meditated on it? How God saved your life some time ago, how you were destined for sin and doom and death and destruction, and how the enemy had a ploy in your life to bring you to destruction. But God saved you by his son. How certain events in your life could have ended you, could have frustrated you, could have depressed you, but God was there. You have to remember what God has done for you. Especially when you feel like you are nothing. Especially when you are going through difficult times. Especially when you feel like the whole world is against you. Especially when it feels like you are falling under the bedding of the universe. You have to remember what God has done for you. The moment you begin to say, can God do this for me? Why is God doing this for this person and he's not doing it for me? When you begin to compare yourself with other people. When you begin to compare your life with other people and think others are better than you, start thinking of the God that saved you, that healed you when you were sick. The God that took you out of that problem when you were just a youth, when you were just a teenager. Remember what God has done for you. Let your mind wander backwards into memory and it will help you, it will encourage you, it will take you out of a certain situation. Point five is to meditate about good virtue and the reward of good virtue. So sit down, meditate about good virtue. What are some of the good things that when we do is going to help us? Like helping the poor, like giving to people, like helping people to accomplish their vision and their dream, lending a helping hand to other people, praying for others, good virtue. So you must also think of good virtue. Think deeply into good virtue and the reward of good virtue so that you continuously do good things. Then point six is meditate about vices, that is bad things and the punishment thereof. This will help you to stay away from the very bad things that people are doing all over the place. In Psalm 1, verses 1 to 2, as I said, the Bible says that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed are you if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So you see, how, how are you going to uh, abstain, to, to stay away from the counsel of the ungodly? When you're able to think about the acts, the attitudes of the ungodly, it will help you to stay away from them. So, child of God, today I'll encourage you to think about these things and how you are going to get yourself away from it. And you see, we should not do bad things because we are going into hell. We should not do bad things because of hell. We should not do bad things because of hell. But we should rather not do them because we love God. We should rather not do them because of the future we want to set. We should rather not do them because of our children and our generation unborn and the effect that our bad deeds can have, have upon them. It's very important. God will not punish your children and their children's children for your bad actions. But the consequences of your bad actions can have a very serious effect on your children or more. So let us try as best as we can to stay away from some of these things. Then point seven, meditate on your core values. As a human being, to maintain direction and focus, you should have core values. What are your core values? Is it hard work? Is it determination? What are your core values? Meditate upon them think into them so that it can help you to live those core values very necessary then point eight meditate on your vision your goals your ambitions the bible says in the book of habakkuk that the vision is yet for an appointed time write it down that they may walk around with it when they see it what is your vision 
What is your life's purpose? Have you thought about it yet? Have you sat down to deliberately let your, 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 your mind sink deep and connect with your spirit to seek help from God? Present your vision to God and let God give you the provision. Let your ambition be before God so that God can help you to accomplish it. For by strength, no man shall prevail. So you need to meditate upon your vision and your ambitions and your goals in life and allow God to brood his grace upon it. Then we have point nine. So meditate on the good reasons why you deserve life and happiness. Some people get so depressed and etc. that they, they don't have any good reasons to live. So they don't want to commit suicide. Because life is going against them and what they expected is not happening. Because many things are happening to them and they feel like giving up. Because they have been battling or fighting a particular ailment and they think that that is the end of the world. Think about the good reason to be alive. Just one good reason is enough for you. One good reason is enough for you to keep you going. The fact that you are being rejected in getting a job and etc. doesn't mean that you are worth nothing. It means that there is something ahead of you which is greater than what you have been looking for. So just stay tuned, stay put, commit everything to God. Meditate on a good reason why you should be alive. Meditate on a good reason why you deserve happiness. And don't let anything in this world, don't let any individual to shut that happiness door for you. It should always remain open. Meditate on a good reason why and keep that good reason close to your bosom. Point 10, my last point on what to meditate on every day is how to please God. You have to meditate on how you are going to please your God. It's very important. David said that the word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin. Psalm 119 verses 11. Have you hid the word of God in your life that you will not sin? It's very necessary. How you are going to please your God, you should meditate upon it. Don't say that I'm a Christian. I'm just doing whatever I like and the grace of God will save me. Bible said, as Paul quotes in the book of Romans, that because there is grace, should we allow sin to abound? Certainly not. We should not capitalize upon the grace of God and sin. It is wrong for us to do that. To let us also meditate on how we are going to please God is very, very necessary. And it will help us to grow in Christ, in the full measure of the stature of Christ. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and share the link with family and friends. God bless you for staying tuned with us. And we hope that you meditate effectively every day.